there. Samantha Meyer says hi. Pam, what's going on? Luke, Jonathan, wh- how you guys doing? Uh, oh, no, no, cancel. I remember getting crushed by Johnny during football practice. Haha, no hard feelings. I don't know how. I never tackled anybody. Jonathan, John, Johnny's not tackling people. <laughs> I, hey, I remember. Do you remember Cur- Curly had Curly would get pissed, and I came up and I accidentally pushed you, and he flipped out on me. He pulled me by my helmet and started yelling at me. Yeah. Um, like you couldn't touch this guy. Me and him had a very volatile relationship until I was about thirty-five. <laughs> <laughs> We get along good now. Yeah. I, always, I shouldn't say that. Like, we all had a good relationship. And I've always like, loved the guy. I shouldn't say I've always loved the guy. Because I've been in love for the first few years. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because I thought it was me. Yeah. Well, but I think yeah. Because, yeah. But I think, you know. Out of love. Since, yeah. Since we're talking about like, sports, and I think, like, uh, you know, in general, coaches are too lenient on players. Right, right. I mean, I remember you telling me so many things where uh, you probably, like, now, if I would have told my parents what he had said, right. my parents were of that certain type of mentality, and they ran to the administration, like, oh, oh, yeah, dude, this, you know what, what I mean? yeah, yeah, Corey, well, you got stories, you, so Corey went to Wazoo, played football for Wazoo, how were your coaches in high school? Um, you gotta speak loud. Our coaches in high school were went to Stadium High School. Um, went to Clover Park for a little bit. Got kicked out of there for fighting. Um, you know, you had to go. You had to be bad to get kicked out of Clover Park for fighting back in the day. So he doesn't know about he doesn't know about Lockburn and Clover Park. Do you? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. when they have. Hey, they have where they have all the metal detectors and my wife was telling me that in elementary over there like you like you had to you had to fight you had yes. to fight yes lake hood yeah yeah she was a little yeah yeah hood girl but yeah when you we know, went to stadium our baggy teams, pants our team was cut not right here yeah at all I think it's good in some regards. I think there needs to be some reining in with it. I think that uh, the quarterback thing is it's a good And um, I don't think that you should be able to transfer the next year to like it, transfer again, transfer again, which is what's happening a lot of people. And then this past fall, you know, after the season, I reached out to a friend of mine who uh, is a Division one offensive coordinator, and I was like, hey man, like, what's going on? We're just chatting up, chatting up. And we were talking about the quarterbacks in the transfer portal. And I think, and I, I forget the exact number, so I don't you know, quote me on this, but there was like 115 or 120 schools that play Division one football, and then there's like 145 quarterbacks in the transfer portal. Like, come on, like, that's just, that's just ridiculous. I think kids should be able to should be allowed to transfer. I do think there should be repercussions. I, I'm fine. Like when I transferred from Oregon to Washington, like the the, the staff and the administration of Oregon could dictate where I wanted to go to school. I don't think that's appropriate. But I don't think sitting out a year is inappropriate either. Like I, I don't think you should be able to just bounce around from school to school to school. Mostly because of those hundred. Forty guys, you know, I'm just talking quarterbacks right now. Of those 140 guys that are in the transfer portal, that's 140 theoretically 140 less spots for high school kids, mm-hmm. right? And then you just get recycled college players because what college coach isn't going to take a 21 year old mm-hmm. transfer as opposed to a 17 or 18 year old? Mm-hmm. Now we're not talking about the number one player in the country. We're not talking about those guys, right? So I think. You know, the transfer portal is good because sometimes kids make bad decisions when they're 17, 18 years old. That's natural. Uh, coaches leave, like when you get there and then you bring someone in, okay, this doesn't really fit. Um, so I think 
I think you should be allowed to transfer wherever you want to go, in conference, at a conference, wherever. Um, I think there should be some sort of deterrent, right? Like, hey, you, you do have to sit out of here. Like, that's fine. Like, I get it. Like, you know, but the constant deal when I used to like quarterbacks going from one school to the next, to the next, to the next, it's like, yeah. Dude, you spent five years in college at three or four different schools. Like, yeah. How do you know it didn't work out? Yeah. Like, you never yeah. gave it a shot. And I think there is some value to, you know, handling adversity and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I mean, you know, recruiting recruiting is one thing. You've been recruited. I was recruited. Like, you get told things in recruiting, right, um, that don't always happen, whatever. It's big business. Like, if, if that happens to you, then make a decision and move on. But I don't think – I don't think what's going on now – is going to be is going to be good for the long haul, and I don't think it's going to be sustainable. Yeah, well, that's what I, well I think a lot of that has to do with like thinking about think about like when this all started, like with COVID and everyone getting an extra year eligibility. Mm-hmm. So now you have kids that were say sophomores, now they they can be a sophomore again. <laughs> Yeah. And get an extra year to play, so yeah. now they're getting to play for five years. So now with the portal, everything is kind of is is overflowing because mm-hmm. you have everyone had another year. So you think about in sports, you go freshman, sophomore, junior, or you have your fresh, you know, your retro year, and now everyone else that was in that time had an extra year. So now you have all these other kids that are still coming up. Plus, you have everyone that had an extra year. So now the talent is like stacked and of course you're going to take someone that's older yeah. you know that season and knows what they're going to do you know you to do you do your life is. yeah so and now it's just like like we're almost to the point where it's like what is going on like even right now you watch the, the uh, March Madness like really unless you're like a big time follower of college football like you don't know where these kids are playing like you don't know where they're at like I just saw like the Fairleigh Dickinson coach or whatever where they be who they beat? Purdue. Right? They had a new coach and they had like three or four new players that came from his own school. It's just like, how do you keep track of it all? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, I, don't know. I think there's, there's there's better ways to do it, but I think the NCAA really dropped the ball years ago. Yeah. Poor David. Poor Purdue. Dave. Purdue. Poor David. <laughs> Purdue. Uh, let's talk about kids, our kids. Since we So we have, so you guys who are on. We have, we're supposed to have a, a platform here. The next thing, rough schedule. So let's talk about this, disciplining our kids. How do you do it? What's your – do you spank? Do you – what do you do? How do you – when something happens, what do you, how do you discipline? You spank? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's parenting that's coaching. Would you let this behavior go on if you were coaching? Right. But obviously there's like probably more love involved in hugs. Mm-hmm. You know? But like would you let this behavior go on if you were coaching if it's on your team and this this level of self pity is going up like would you address it? This level of not listening and adhering to the fundamentals of life, would you let that go on? Like, the things we've met and, like, we address it. I think we have to do that kind of a line in the sand and be like, you will not be here for that. You you will not, you you will not win today, right? If it's whatever it is, like, going to bed or eating or like, whatever, like, you just, you just don't know who it is. I mean, yes. I so I grew up right. It's super. It's it's su- it's super hard. It's. For sure. It's super hard. I think – so where do you think in the young years of your kids you might have done things differently with parenting? 
it, yeah. Well, yeah. well, uh, uh, yeah. on the, yeah. I'm not yeah. on the on the discipline side. I think I don't know if we would really do a lot of things differently, just because like now, like our eight year old and five year old, they're like really good kids. Right? They're like very polite and stuff like that. A lot of it is spite, probably, of like my own deal, you know, because like we were trying to get ready to go to baseball practice last night. And, you know, like we don't get out of house quickly. Right. It drives me nuts. So I'm like, yeah, I was talking to Freddie and I walked out and 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 walked out. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, oh. And they get ready quick and they go to my mom. And they go to my mom. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. You don't get to say, I do. Yeah, yeah. You start paying for your stuff and you just pay what you want. Until that happens, it's not going to work. Yep. Yep. What about you, Corey? Um... Yes, I do spank. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I would say, like, when I was your, you, you evolve as a parent, right? right. Over, yeah. over the years. You, you get wiser. You know what battles to fight, which ones to not fight. And so, like, earlier when they were younger, you know, I, I spanked them a lot more. Um, now. They never get spankings, you know, even like my 10 year old. I can't even think of when the last time he got a spanking. Um, and I think it came with more understanding. My wife always tells me, is like, you need to let's talk things out, let's, let's hear their feelings, let's see where they're coming from. So that has been, I've been working on that since I've been a parent of mm. like, because when I grew up, it was like, no, you do what I told you to do because I told you to do it. Right. I don't need to tell you why right. or what or when or oh, how. I like to your oh, I love my parents. Um, okay, so, like, my point, yeah. Like, we like, oh, we should do things X, Y, and Z. But you had a great relationship with your parents. I had a great relationship with my parents. Like, I was scared of my parents. I was probably like 17. You know, my dad didn't walk down the stairs and touch me in the face for no reason, but it was like, hey, you better do this, right? Like, it, I think it has a lot to do with what's accepted and what's not accepted in society now, you know. And so, like, for example, you know. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. So that's, you know. It's, maybe all the that we have. Like, could be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could be. <laughs> no, yeah. no, that's, that's the last thing I would want to be right now. Teachers don't you for you back in the day you never got paid. You for sure don't get paid enough now. I'm just saying. You gotta dig deal with cat litter and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So no, I I spanked a lot. So I came from a family where we spanked. A lot, yeah. Love my family, love my mom, love it. But it, 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 it's it creates um, each individual is different. I think I have more. Uh, I don't have patience. So in the beginning, I learning how to be a dad was tough for me because I didn't have patience. I was just like, you do what you're told. That's it. Mm-hmm. There's no question. You just do what you're told, right? So. Patience in talking things out has been something that I've been trying to do a lot. It's super hard for me, extremely hard for me. I hate yelling, but I do it. You know what I mean? Because I hate spanking. <laughs> see, the thing is, see, the thing is, though, it's like, it's so funny. Like, you meet my family, we all talk loud. My brother, we all talk extremely loud. You go to a normal family, I guess, normal, whatever normal is, they'd be like, why are you guys yelling at each other? Well, that's just how we communicate, you know, and so it's hard be having my wife that never had experienced that in a in a family concept, like me saying, "Hey, let's go," would be like my kid would break down crying, like that's yelling, that's yelling, yeah, like like I can't believe you spilled the milk, Luke. That's yelling. So I got I've been trying. 
till I yell a lot. I yell a lot then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but you know, uh, sometimes I, I would say I would have a temper on. Sometimes, um, man, I made a lot of mistakes learning how to be a dad. A lot of them spanking too much for stupid stuff. They love me, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, right, right, right. We can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. If you're there, you're winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I what I what I don't what I don't want to happen is the closeness because I never really had that with my family is is like we I can I mean we were close now right but it took a long time like your dad maybe you might have been scared of him since 17 I don't think we started hugging until I was 17 you know what I'm saying um like it's weird and awkward sometimes to get in a group hug you know what I mean like just a hug, like mom and dad, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it's gotten a lot better, and I don't know why that is or how come what for. I see other family members hug, kiss on the cheek. That'd be weird to me. Be be awkward to me. But but you know, right? No, gosh, no. Yeah, yeah. That would that's weird. That's another thing. All right. So like kissing on the mouth, I just. I don't know. I don't know what generation that comes from. I don't know how that comes from, but I just don't kiss your kid on the mouth. That's you. Whatever. I don't. I don't do that. I don't do that. Yeah, kiss one person on the mouth. Yeah. That'd be, that, yeah, my wife. Yeah. yeah. I don't even, yeah. Dogs, don't even kiss a dog my on the grandma, mouth. My grandma tried to get like, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, are we, what are we doing? No. Come on. Um, but no, I, I think uh, I've learned a lot. I've mellowed out a lot. I learned how to actually be... Um, like the longest relationship I had when I was, it was like maybe a year, two years. That was just relation, just girlfriend and relationship in general. So I really didn't know how to be in a relationship when I got married. Not even a little bit. Are you supposed to? I don't know. Same well, no, I know that. Yeah, like- but you, how long you been married for? Eight years. How long you been married? Uh, be uh, thirteen years in. April second. Yeah, so I'm about twelve. I just since you raised the bar. Yeah, yeah. With that, I, had to throw it <laughs> I don't know. I don't. The first, maybe June first, twelfth, somewhere around there. You, you I've been get that right. Yeah, I know. Edit that. Edit. I'm gonna say Give three names: something. June twelfth, thirteenth, tenth. You just do the whole month. <laughs> it's around there. The we're twelve. Month. We're twelve years in the making. Um, anyways, all right, that's that with dads. If you're a dad out there, don't be too hard on yourself. I want to tell one funny story. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, yeah. 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 Anyway, so I'm taking her to dance. She's like, yeah. She's like, oh. She's like, I'm torn between whether I'm going to cruise or not. What? get sick mm-hmm. that's my fear with cruise being on a cruise and everybody gets sick it happened covid anyways is that all you got that yeah it was funny but but that's funny um does she really <laughs> jeez i was gonna say when did she see the titanic um yeah no, not anymore. Real estate, you pretty busy? Yes. Yes, very busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the market look like, Johnny? 
right? Yeah. What's that one guy you were talking about? Barry Habib. Barry Habib. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what does that mean? Price hike or interest rate hike, yep. It's it's an inter right. Because because of all this, here's my opinion. Based on what Johnny was saying, is that for a buyer, just get in it and buy. But for somebody who's selling a home right now, because the market is somewhat. St- stable get into uh uh get in and start selling your house right now because there is no inventory right now right now right now we're seeing um multiple offers amber at least a couple offers on every house we have listed huh yeah Yeah, at least i think on one we had four this week when we sold uh which one this week did we have more what was that i street M Street, how many offers? Three. So we had three offers. And then Cascade, Bonnie Lake, I think we had it listed at 500 and it sold for 625. Yeah. So Bonnie Lake listed at 500, 599 sold for 625. Uh, yeah. You got you got beat out on one. You submitted yeah, an offer. Beat out on two. Got beat out on two offers. Yeah. Yeah, so five offers. So here's the deal for I might poke a little, you know, might make some people mad, but if if the agent you're working with is not currently active, they don't know the market. Does that make sense? Is that fair to say? It makes perfect sense because the market from a month and a half ago, two months, is totally different. It's totally different. So if, 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 if you um, have any questions about selling your home, uh, let me know. Let us know. Um, and find an agent, a lender that are actually active in today's market. Cause it's, it's, it's a completely different, it's almost like every month it's, it could be different. Yeah. Because you know, the buyers I was helping a month and a half ago, they were getting all their closing costs paid. Right. You yeah. Know, month and a half ago, closing under, costs paid under asking, under asking. I remember our listings were getting at asking or under asking and getting, we were paying, you know, we were paying out the butt for their closing. Now I have clients that were we did uh, uh, we have a, a ranch coming on market and her reply to me was, you know, all these people are asking for closing costs. Well, that's not necessarily true right now. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's like you gotta you gotta be ready to roll it on top. Yep. Um, what's the difference between a LO and a broker? Because you're a broker. So what's the difference between a normal loan officer and a broker? <laughs> Okay, that's so. This is interesting. If you guys don't know, this is a interesting. A lot of people don't have a clue about there's a difference. Okay. 
you know, properties over 10 acres or, you know, to lift the refinance programs or feed out to the lender loans or the smoking loans. As a broker, uh, we're part of with 53 different investors. So that means that 53 different hmm. places that have, you know, that have the best and the best specific and the best program, that kind of thing. Hmm. And that was just a more, I don't know, flexibility in, in rate. We have to get your rate from a uh, retail shop as being, being a wholesaler. So I think a better rate there. And I think we have to get to if we need to come down on the rate a little bit to get our DCI within, you know, within rate of deals. I can just do that myself. Just make it up a bit. So I don't have to ask anybody. I don't have to go, you know, seek approval from a branch manager or district manager or anything like that. It's just like we're talking, you know, I got a buyer. What do we need to do to get this done? You know, especially now, right? It's not as important to me because I know it's what the issue is going to be able to do this again. Right? I'm of the belief that making something with a bunch of loans is better than making as much as possible with a few loans. Right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's just my opinion. It's crazy because a lot of people. Um, if you're certain, if you're if you're looking for like insurance on a car, you, if you can find a broker, a good broker, they'll, they'll get you a better rate. it out yeah it's an, it's an interesting world so if you ever want to get car insurance uh cheaper car insurance or you know just a really good rate for buying broker can be a good way to do that right That's great. So that's it. We're, we're going to get better at this as we move along. That was good. Yeah. That was <laughs> yeah. So self, so self-deprecating. Hey, Maybe this is really I know. Good. How many people left the, the live? Uh, Did they all leave? No, it wasn't no. So good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was good. I think it was good. All right. Well, that's it, y'all. We'll get better at this technology. That's it. We good? We good. We good. Later. Later.